Hello and a great big welcome. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Welcome to 3ABN Family Worship. We're glad that you decided to join us here. I'm Kenny Shelton along with my wife, Chris Shelton. Uh, Chris, I'm glad you're here with us to help and to encourage like you always do. Uh, we have a, a, a real good program we think lined out and actually the third part. We're talking about uh, order amid chaos. Mm -hmm. And so since we live in a chaotic world, if you're like me, every day it just seems like there's more chaos. Mm -hmm. And what? how do I deal with it as a Christian? How do, how's the world dealing? dealing with this thing called, you know, chaos. And sometimes it's, it's, it's not very nice, things that we're seeing, action and reaction. And so we're going to be looking from the Word of God, bless your heart, and uh, we want to make sure you get your Bible, pencil, and paper, all the things that you need to write things down. I don't want you to miss anything. Remember, this is the third part, so you might say there's some questions that I want to go back. I'm sure you can get those programs, and I'd like for you to go back and listen to them all because I think it'll make more sense. So we're going to try to get through. We have a couple of questions, uh, four and five or whatever. We're going to be going mm -hmm. in first after we introduce everybody. We have a lot of help, and we're thankful and grateful that we have help. Oh, yes. Aren't we? So oh, yes. yeah, I don't like to call Always. it a panel. I call it family. That, it is family. Our family joins here. Yeah, and, and, it uh, is yeah. family. You always introduce them so well. Why don't you just go ahead? Okay. To my right is Brother Eddie and his lovely wife, Linda Clark. Yeah, yeah. I, just this past week, somebody says, oh, I was listening to Sister Linda and Eddie yeah. on the radio. They are on 3ABN Radio. What's mm -hmm. the name of your program that's on uh, 3ABN? Natural Remedies for Good Health. Yes, and yeah. I enjoy that too. I en yeah. I've learned quite a bit listening to you guys on the radio and yeah. watching you in person and talking to you in person. Thank you. Yes. And then to your right is mm -hmm. another family member, yes. Marilyn and her husband, Eric yeah. Durant, and they are full-time here at 3ABN. You guys want to tell us a little bit about who you You've been on our panels uh, yeah. before, and we love having all <laughs> of you guys. Always new people, though, hey. But Sister Marilyn, what do you do here? I'm the manager of 3AB and Call Center. Yes. Yes. So a lot of people are familiar with the call center. Yes. In fact, they, they may be more familiar with the call center, you know, as far as one-on-one -on -one interaction than, than well, anything else because here. we filter a lot of the calls. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you handle a lot of wonderful information, a lot yes, of wonderful books and items. I, I love the call yeah. center. Yeah. And Brother Eric, mm -hmm. do you oh. stay busy here, Eric? Oh, very, very busy. Yeah. But it's a blessing because it's better busy than bored. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and, that and, is and true. Keeping us on the air is what engineering is all about. Amen. Yeah. Yes. I play a small part of that. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a blessing because I get to see the effect that it has on other people. And that makes the work worth it. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't it? I don't know if there's a little update that um, Ed and Linda can give us, you know, about their ministry and what's going on. I know they've been doing a lot of remodeling and a lot of work and uh, they've been busy as they can be. And uh, well, we've, we've been here a little over a year. A little over a year. And yes. we've remodeled the building. Yes. It's almost complete. Yeah. We do have all of our modality rooms done. Wow. And uh, yes. the uh, herbal side of the ministry, we never did quit it. Mm -hmm. Even during the moving and everything, we were still sending out orders yes. while we were moving, which was lots of fun. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, we're, we're really close getting the building wrapped up, really, really close. Praise God. Good. I remember when we first got here, we had to set up in the building behind the church while we were doing the renovations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember that it had, the roof had a leak in the, in, it was it supposed to be a storage one. building, but we, we repurposed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it had a leak and it was freezing out. It was, oh. And so we were cold and it was wet and... Um, electricity went out. The electricity <laughs> went out. And uh -oh. so we had these lights on our forehead and filling orders and we never <laughs> did close down. I don't know why we were so determined other yeah. than we don't want to hurt anybody and don't want anybody to do without. Yeah. But the That's Lord the was with us the whole way and uh, we, I remember having, as we were filling the orders, I remember telling my husband, the Lord has something good in yes. store for us. I just feel it because it was just so much of a trial. But you guys yeah. were there all the way through yeah, and, and you were good friends back we then. Just, we, did, we, did, we, did, we just seen and be able to witness miracle mm -hmm. after miracle. We can really say that miracle right. after miracle that's mm -hmm. taken place in the ministry that you guys are ahead of. And it's a wonderful thing. And, and we can say honestly and openly, they're, they're open and ready to help. It doesn't matter what time of day mm -hmm. or night, mm -hmm. whatever we do, and we're calling all the time, help, 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 <laughs> you know, and they always answer the call. The only so, thing I have to say is we are so unworthy. What an incredible- We're very uh, humbled. 
posts that Lord has put us in. Yeah. But we're servants. We're servants for the Amen. Lord. He's the great physician, and we That's are just it. simple servants. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we I want to. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, um, she had mentioned the church, and mm -hmm. the church actually used to be 3ABN's church mm -hmm. before the larger one that many of you have visited or you may see on television now. So you're in the smaller one that they used to use every, every Sabbath and during the week. And then you mentioned modality room. Now, I, when I first started here in modality room, I thought, well, what is that? So what is that? There's probably a lot of people like me yeah, yeah. that's not familiar with modality rooms. Okay, so that's where we have a lot of our different uh, treatments. treatments. Mm. Mm -hmm. We have uh, hot and cold therapy. We have a machine called a Game Ready. It was originally designed for... Um, injuries uh, in, for yeah, athletics. Athletic injuries, and we've repurposed it for natural remedies and hydrotherapy, yeah. and it works great. We used it a whole lot uh, during COVID, helping people with COVID. and. Mm. Um, so we just, modality room is just a treatment room where you can get a different type of, whether it's hot and yes, cold massage have. or. Amen. Like Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, we, we just need those updates, I think, once in a while and, and coming from different times and, and more than once, over and over and over because people, new people are tuning in and watching and so on and they may have issues and things that uh, God's people can help on. So we want right. to like to we're throw just, that out there. We're just hoping for uh, Chris to be able to bring you in one of these days and let us work on you. <laughs> 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 uh -oh. He's just too healthy. Uh, he doesn't like need I us. Like I said, here, <laughs> <laughs> we have a real good study, bless your heart. Now that the here. whole world yeah. knows. <laughs> that probably, Call him, that tell him probably would be know. order amid chaos <laughs> if I got around there. So anyway, go ahead, Aaron. I'll be, I'll be good. Well, we just want to give a little bit of a synopsis because because we during did, yeah. this series, yeah. Order Amid Chaos, we have been biblically unpacking a statement bait that was made by Henry Frederick Emil who wrote, Order means light yes. and peace, inward liberty, yes. and free command over oneself. Order is power. Amen. In part one of this series, we discussed at length the symbiotic relationship between biblical order and the light of mm. the world. Mm -hmm. The light of the world. Is, yeah. Who does that make you think of? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We also discussed the blessings of order in relationship mm. to the peace that passes all understanding and how it grows to affect our families, our churches, our businesses, our government. You know, when the family begins to fall apart, you don't have order. It oh. just is a domino effect. Yes. <laughs> in part two, we discussed at length the relationship between order and its role in producing inward liberty. Oh. That is such a topic in today's world, inward Amen. liberty. Amen. We strongly encourage you, all of you at home, to go back, mm. go to YouTube, and look those uh -huh. up. Yes. Order amid chaos. Um, it would say part one and part two, and today would be part three. So mm -hmm. as we begin, we need to begin yeah, with, with prayer. prayer. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. So who's going to yeah, pray? I first? think Brother Ed said he would. Okay. okay. So would you pray, please? Yes. Let's bow our heads. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time you've set aside for us to draw closer to you, to study your holy word, mm -hmm. to also learn from our friends with us, our family. Yes. We pray a wonderful blessing. We also pray a wonderful blessing for those who are watching and listening. Amen. May hearts be touched. May each soul come to a closer and more determined decision to mm -hmm. follow you and your ways, dear Lord, we pray. Yes, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. Mm -hmm. amen. 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 Thank you. Well, you know, we started out with five questions and what was right. interesting because you guys weren't on the first two parts. Mm -hmm. And when we sat down here before the program began <laughs> tonight, um, mm -hmm. Eric said, how could you have only spoke on one question? <laughs> That's a good They're one. power packed <laughs> questions. Power, Amen. Amen. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we just allow the Holy Spirit Amen. to lead and to guide rather than to push. Sometimes, you know, the teacher comes out of me and I want to push a little mm -hmm. bit, but I've learned to just kind of sit back and just relax and just go wherever the Lord mm -hmm. leads us. And number four, this is actually question number four. Okay. It says, explain free command over oneself and why this is so important in the Christian centered life. Free command over oneself. Now I have my own thoughts, but I want to throw it out to you guys first. 
and then I can always come back to myself later. Mm -hmm. I was watching a video a couple days ago mm -hmm. on a gentleman, he was 50 something years old, in his early 50s, and his family gave him a gift. He was colorblind, mm. and the mm. gift that the family member gave him was a pair of glasses yeah. that made him, be, gave him the ability to see color. Wow. Mm. And the impact on him, he, he cried like a well, baby. Sure. As soon as he saw the trees and the grass and everything, he said he couldn't believe it. To me, that's liberty. Mm -hmm. You know, Good. you live your whole yeah. life thinking and being stuck by sin in this world, maybe huh. a black and white world, and suddenly God gives you glasses mm -hmm. and you see things. Good. And you yes. can't help but be jubilant about it and, yes. and overjoyed. Amen. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's how oh, wow. I see that. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Anybody else have another thought? Well, one of the things I think about it, uh, I think it kind of goes along with, with inward liberty too. Mm -hmm. um, I think of freedom of conscience. Yes. Religious liberty. Mm -hmm. Command over oneself. Well, I'm going to just throw this out to you because free command over oneself, it, it reminds me a lot of what I've read in scripture and what I've read in spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. It's not allowing our passions, mm -hmm. our pride and our our appetite to overtake or have rule over our characters and our actions. So that order that God gives us in his word, basic, basic instructions before leaving earth, the Bible, <laughs> well, you know, it, it begins mm. to put all these things in place because we can just lose it when we don't have control over our passions. Sister mm. Linda, when we don't have control over our appetite, well. we have so much information, maybe our pride. A lot of people are so prideful and, and you know, that turns people away from the, the cause of Christ. And of course, you know, pride cometh before a fall. Mm -hmm. So to me, when it was talking about how order um, would give us the power to have that, that free command over ourself, our character, our inward person, that's what it was saying to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I found this in manuscript 8C and it was written in 1891, but it's so powerful. Wow. It says the windows of impulse. Mm. And I today I, I thought I'm going to look that word impulse up because we all have an idea what impulse mm -hmm. means, right? But I looked it up. It is a strong and an unreflected urge mm. or desire to act. Well, what does that mean unreflected? Who can tell me? You're not really thinking, thinking, you're thinking about, about it. About yeah. it. Thank yeah. you. Right. Thank you. You're not really thinking about it. Yeah. You just react. Yeah. You know, and that's not always a good thing. No. Now there might be sometimes, I know this is gonna get off, but one time I was kneeling <laughs> down by a septic top oh. and I, I, I just knelt down. He was already down there. And as soon as I knelt down, he just hit me and knocked me back. Hmm. And I thought, what in the world is he hitting me for? Oh. <laughs> but there was a snake and I didn't see the oh. snake. But you know, a lot of people. I'm glad she finished that. <laughs> what kind was it? I have no clue. I have no clue. But sometimes we just don't even think. He may not even have thought I'm going to hurt her or anything like that, which I was fine, really. But you know, it was just that was his impulse. And um, so let me but, go but back. But still had thought. <laughs> the thought was, mm -hmm. I knew I was going to put my arm against her. But it was thought of you. Fast you do it, but then when you feel contact, you actually let off and push. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a strike type thing that could right. really hurt. You had to do it quickly to get away because mm -hmm. that thing was right down there at her and she did not see it. It wasn't that far from well, her. Well, you so. know, the reason you're able to do that is because you've had experience mm -hmm. and you had order in your life that mm -hmm. would tell you, this is when I stop. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Bible oh, gives us. So let's go back to this quote. The windows of mm -hmm. impulse or feeling must be open toward heaven mm. and the dust yeah. of selfishness and earthliness in that beautiful must be expelled. Isn't that a beautiful mm -hmm. thought? Mm -hmm. The grace of God. And how many times have you guys ever asked yourself, what is the grace of God? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about it? What do you think the grace of God is? Well, uh, frequently grace is uh, accompanied with the ideas of mercy. Yes. Unmerited, something we don't deserve. Something Amen. We deserve. We've heard it said many times, uh, unmerited, what you said, yeah. unmerited, unmerited favor, favor that God shows us none deserving as we are. Yeah, right. Isn't that but, wonderful? He still... Yeah, and you but, know, uh, go ahead. sorry. Um, you know how important it is to God that we have that, that choice. 
you know, when we you, you come go into third world countries that yes. that they don't have the freedoms that we have. Right. Uh, that's usually a pagan country, but when you bring Christianity in and you bring the principles that we that Christ mm. meant for us to have, then we have freedoms. Amen. And He wants us to be able to make these choices because He's given us this this power of choice. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Sometimes the, sometimes the old person wants to come out. Yes. That old oh. black and white person yes. Yes. that used to exist. And the man that put on the glasses and he was no longer colorblind, mm -hmm. that just changed his life. Yes. Absolutely. And that's, I used to be selfish. Yes. Well. And then Christ came into my life. Come on. And you see all the colors, all the beauty, yeah. all the, you have a hope that you didn't have yes. before. Yes, yes. And it transforms you. That's Amen. beautiful. You no longer look at the simple things, the little black and white old you doesn't exist anymore. You're now looking at, at the beauty of things. That's just another Amen. way to, to actually give a definition of grace. Grace is giving us what we do not deserve. Mm -hmm. Mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. Mm -hmm. But I found this in Wikipedia today and I thought how interesting, it fits with this quote and then we'll go back and finish the quote. It says, divine grace is a theological term that has been defined as divine influence which operates in humans, listen, to regenerate. We all Amen. need to regenerate Amen. our Amen. hearts, our minds, our Amen. souls, and to sanctify, which we know that means Amen. to make holy, to inspire virtuous in impulses, and to impart strength, to endure trial, and resist temptation. And as an individual virtue, our ex excellence of divine origin. I, there's a mistype mm. there, but anyway, so going back now to the quote from, um, I think I said messages, or no, manuscripts, 8C. Mm. The grace of God must sweep through the chambers of the mind. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's, it's sweeping through there to regenerate our mind, to sanctify our mm. mind. The imagination must have heavenly themes for contemplation and, mercy, yeah. and every element of nature must be purified and vitalized by the Spirit of God. That mm -hmm. was just so powerful yeah. to me. Yeah. To me, that was another quote that we could sit and unpack. <laughs> and even as we think about that yeah. every part of our mm. being needs to be um, purified and vitalized, I think of so many ways that the enemy is attacking. No oh, mercy. And he's yeah. attacking our children. Mm. And one thing that came to my mind, and you guys may know more about this mm. than I do, but a couple of our grandkids have this new little thing called an Oculus. Mm -hmm. And they put it over Boy, and they're, wow. they're going into this imaginary virtual world. Right. Now I know there's some things for adults too. Mm. And sure, it can. It, it's kind of like Casper oh. the Friendly Ghost, you know, it, makes it real sweet in the beginning and then it gets oh. worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that. I was, I was with one of my uh, grandchildren the other day mm -hmm. and I said, well, what, what were you looking at in there? And um, he told me and, and then he said, well, and we were shooting all these guns and da 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 oh. And I'm thinking, oh my, because they're just so young and so moldable. And when you see all that violence, a lot of times I think that's why we're seeing it in the streets. Mm -hmm. If we want order in our heart and our yeah, mind, yeah. we need to be careful what yeah. we put into our heart. That's, and that's right. right. Because you know, along with that, when you talk about order, there, there's a peace. Mm -hmm. And I've often wondered and that question myself is how, how do we know that we've found that peace? the real peace that God wants us to have in our hearts and in our life. And I just hadn't be, I was reading today in a great controversy, I wrote down a, a, the thing and how can I, how can I know, how can you know that you've really found that peace which many are looking for, many look for it in the wrong places, others are looking for it in the right places. Mm -hmm. They're opening the Word of God but maybe, you know, there's no one around but the Holy Spirit will help them if they just ask. Mm -hmm of what we're looking at. And I thought this was a good answer that we may, sh we can be sure that we have peace with God if this takes place. And I, just, I thought it was interesting. Great Controversy 463 said this, there is no evidence of genuine repentance unless it works, you brought this up, reformation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we say we repent and we're sorry, but, but, but unless it makes a change in our life, uh-uh, it's That's not right. the real McCoy. That's it's right. the counterfeit. And then That's it right. goes on and says this, if he restores the pledge, 
given, given again that which he has robbed, confesses his sin, gets down and starts labeling them out here, and love, love God and loves his fellow man, the sinner may be sure he has found peace with God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's restoring things that we have done wrong where we can, we restore and we bring back. You can be sure that you found that real peace with God. If you don't, there's going to be something in the back of your mind that there's two or three things you haven't taken, one thing that you haven't maybe taken care of that they, they know they need to take care mm -hmm. of to make sure they have the peace. It will keep coming back and right. keep coming back until you finally take care of it. Right. And you know what is so beautiful is what we just read about that divine mm. grace is how it in powers, how it operates and we're never alone. We don't have to rejuvenate or, uh -huh. or even come to repentance on our own. That yeah, is a gift of God. You, you know, it, you're talking about free command over oneself. Well, that can be taken two different ways. One can be the wrong way. We can have free command to do what, the wrong uh, whatever thing. thou wilt, yeah. so to okay. speak. But something else that comes to my mind in regard to grace, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, mm -hmm. He said unto me, and this is uh, what Christ said, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul comments here, he says, Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities Mercy. that yes. the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm -hmm. So while grace includes unmerited favor, it also includes power mm -hmm. yes. so that we can have victory over sin. Amen. There you go. And Good. see, we're talking about order amid mm -hmm. chaos. So we're looking to the Bible, which you just read, so that we know which direction to go. Right. Because you're right, you can go either way. Mm -hmm. Sister Linda, do you have um, Philippians 4, 8 there that you could read to us? Philippians 4, 8. Whatsoever things are true, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are mm. lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, oh boy. if there be any virtue, virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Uh, and you wow. know what? How many times we fill our, our little moments with other things that are, they add up. At the end of the day, they add up. Yes. Uh, how many times we're looking at our phone, we have moments that we, um, you know, we, and, and, and I do this myself, and this is something that I struggle to, to not do, and that is to fill my mind and my little moments with with uh, little things I, where I used to be able to spend more time in the Bible and uh -huh. I, now I have to struggle to make myself, um, make sure I don't spend too much time at my computer, all of those little things that add up mm -hmm. uh, that, w that we need to be spending that time in the Lord and mm -hmm. prayer. Amen. Amen. And these are wonderful basic oh, well, instructions yeah. before leaving earth. That's right. If we want to leave earth in the right uh, direction, right? That's right. <laughs> What but do you, you, you know, you can read in the Word and you can go over and over and over all these things that it would be good to do, we should do, and so, but then we just have to look back at the real enemy is ourself. Mm, right. And I just mm -hmm. had a little, little quote that I put out on Mount of Blessing 16 says, love of self destroys. Yes. Not only our connection with Christ, but yes. destroys our peace, you know, our, our, our duty that we have to our fellow man and duty to God. Self is the big issue that keeps coming back. Like I said, you're looking, you yeah. said self. Sometimes we have to learn to lay things down and sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do. We only have so many hours in a day and we have to try to decide what's the most important. Yeah. She said something when we left today to come over here and said something, well, that's going to have to be done. I said, it can wait. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't fill my mind with it right now. I don't want to hear about it right now because I'm not going to do it right now. Yes. Is that okay to do that? Yeah. You know, we what, do a little too. bit's up here. I'm thinking about what we need to be doing as a priority. Priorities. See, priority is, was to me, was, is the program. Priority, I'll just say it's the Sabbath morning, if That's I'm right. bringing a message. That's right. She'll tell you that too. I, I don't want to hear other stuff. I don't want to be involved in other stuff. And I, sometimes I, I, be, I want to be by myself. I but, want to go in a room by myself. Uh -huh. Not that you don't like people, but you don't want things to distract and get you off of what the Holy Spirit's been working with you all week. You see, on. Kenny, that's order. Yes. Order, uh -oh, order my... is the opposite of confusion. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Once you've found order, you find that peace. Amen. And what you just described is we're trying to stay away from the chaos and the confusion part and, <laughs> yep. and focus on yes. the order that God's... Yes. And, Amen. And, chaos and, and, and confusion, a they're interchangeable. It wow. is a struggle yes. indeed. Yeah. Well, I think it's... Life is so much easier when there's no chaos. And I think about my own life yeah. and mm. before having Christ in my life, mm -hmm. I had to make a conscious decision of 
choosing him and Come on. regardless of whatever I was going through, yeah. it made it easier. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. Last, last week, Marilyn said something that I found really interesting and I didn't really think about it. She says, Eric, we don't have the problems that our other family members seem to have. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. going through this and they're going through that and they're going through all kind of things. And this, what you just talked about today, kind of answers that question. It's mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're living in a state of order where they're living in a state of chaos. chaos. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're reaping the rewards for that chaos in their that's life. Right. And that's, that's the right. difference. We have a peace yeah. because we try to follow the order that God yes. created. And Amen. the order gives us that peace when Amen. we get the order from the, the Bible. Yeah. Right. Somebody, while I, I talk about this for a moment, look up Romans 10 verse 3. Somebody look up Romans 10 verse 3. Um, another one would be Isaiah 64, 6, Isaiah 64, 6. But the other thing I wanted to point out that you were talking about is, yes, it brings more order into our mm. home, into our life, you know, ministry, yes. everything that we're doing. Mm -hmm. But mm. I think a great gift is having, what is the title of this message? Order amid chaos. Mercy. I mean, think about the martyrs, mm -hmm being burned on the cross mm. and they're praying, they're singing, you know, the different ones that we have read about, you know, the apostles and, and the Christians and, and, and maybe even in our own lives that we have gone through times. Um, I used, I would say I'm better at it now than I used to be. Well, um, ask me if you are. I said, I said I'm better at it than I used to be. Maybe, so, maybe not me. every single time. <laughs> okay. But and mm -hmm. a good example of this, I'll just share it. I've shared it before. Maybe you've heard it. If not, oh, you're going to hear it this time. <laughs> is one time I was behind my desk mm -hmm. and the finances at the ministry were really, 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 really concerning. And mm -hmm. he came in and I said, I don't think we're going to make it. I, this is it. And I was literally shaking. I was so upset that I, I was just shaking. I thought, well, you know, we're going to go bankrupt. Everything's going to be gone. Da, 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 da. And I thought he would come and console me and say, oh, honey, it's come on, all honey, right. Come on, honey. Come on now. It's okay. <laughs> and instead he looked at me and he says, where is your faith? Hmm. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> but it slapped me into reality. Yeah, that was you know, better than, right, it's it better than slapped you. me into it was, reality. It was trying to remind you where your anchor is. But yeah. you know what? There's several times since you then when things will start to, you know, like make me feel a little sick yeah. in my stomach yeah. and I'm starting to get out of order that I'm thinking, where is your faith? That's it. Amen. Where is your faith? Yeah. yeah. We've, we've had similar. We, yeah. uh, I was working um, one job and uh, she was needing more help with the business and the ministry and mm -hmm. and so I would spend a lot of time after hours and on the weekends helping her and, and um, things at work wasn't going that great anyway and I was I was ready to quit and, mm -hmm. and we discussed a couple times you know stepping out in faith and just sure. letting the ministry support us. And he was working at, this was years ago and he was working outside of outside. our business. Yeah. Yes. yes. And so um, Finally, one day I come home and I said, well, I gave him my two week notice. Oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> and it was a little bit of, where's yeah. your faith? <laughs> yeah. if, if the Lord's calling us to this, to, calling us to this ministry, yes. he will take care of us. He Amen. will provide. And, and the amazing thing about that was that we never saw a difference in our, our finances. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, never, never where's changed. this extra money coming from? I, I don't see it money. coming into yeah. the bank yeah. account, but yet everything's paid. Yeah. And yeah. It, it was unbelievable. Yeah. It was a really, really is big eye-opener. Yeah, isn't good that what God we've been, is. that's a good illustration. Everybody's talking about the thing, again, you're talking about that we, we have chaos that's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it bites us just a little bit before we really think back of who's in charge, mm -hmm. who's sitting on the throne, right. where all these blessings come from, mm -hmm. how many mm -hmm. we have received over the years, our, our whole life has been blessing after blessing. To be honest, we all have, we have roof over our head, we have vehicle, we have food. You know, I mean, it's just an awesome thing. But some, like I say, sometimes we get in a little straight place, it's chaotic for a second, mm -hmm. and the enemy would have you to lose it. And praise God to have a spouse or maybe a friend that might you know, you know, come out of it. Uh, I said, yeah. I come out of it. But you know what? You think about that. All right. So our lives, the, yeah. the lives of the children of Israel yeah. were supposed to be chronicled for those whom the ends of the earth come upon. You know, we're, we're just children of Israel, just like they were. Yes. Well, you know, here are trial after trial when you saw dramatic oh. appearances by the, the Lord as far as the, you know, miracle after miracle, sure. the cloud that yes. followed them by yes. day and the 
and just the way they led. And then when the water quit, you know, he'd been mm -hmm. feeding, the, giving them water mm -hmm. through the 40 years in the wilderness, and all of a sudden the water quit, and all of a sudden they lost their faith. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yes. how can water come from a rock <laughs> in the middle of nowhere? Yes. You can go on the other side of it and look, and there is no possible way. Right. Water could be coming yeah. from this rock, but for 40 years they saw that, yeah. and then all of a sudden the, the water stopped, and then guess what? In comes the grumbling. How many times yes. we do that? We forget. Oh, we forget absolutely. how the Lord has led you, us. You know what self is? Amazing. Self reminds me of when I say to myself, well, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Every time, every time, like when we first came to the ministry, with, like you just said, the finances are supposed to go down. You're not supposed to have as much money. That's right. And you're worried about going because you're like, you're going from this pay scale to this pay scale. And you're Come saying, on. well, what's in it for me? Yes. Aren't, we, aren't we losing out here? Yeah. But when you switch over and make yourself Christ-centered, and you maintain that faith, yeah. you find that, that He supplies. Amen. But I'm, I'm wondering, is, is, is that, even as a Christian, is that normal to begin with in transition? You were, you know, trans, uh, transitioned from maybe a high paying job over here and all of a sudden you're going to go full time in ministry or, you know, uh, 3AB in the beginning, like you say, you know, with construction for 18 years and we had to quit. No income. Right. No anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, you have to stop and think, because if you don't think on it too much, everybody around you will. Mm. Right. <laughs> have you gone mad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to lose your house. You know how you feed your family. Blah, blah, blah. You say, you know, God will provide. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why God calls us to be disciples. Come on. We're disciples as health ministers. Mm -hmm. You all are disciples working here at this ministry. Yes. You all are disciples yeah. in your own ministry. God calls every person to be a disciple in some kind of Good. ministry. Mm, yes. And we don't get to retire. We don't get to <laughs> retire. We never get to retire. <laughs> but, it's, but it's for this very purpose is every step we take with the Lord is a faith builder. Yes, Come on. It right? Yes, it is. Because like when I quit my job mm -hmm. and was doing the business and the ministry full time, and yet we could look at the uh, bank account at the end of the month every Come month. On. And it was exactly the same. <laughs> you know, there was no way I was going to sit down and write out no. a budget. Yeah. And Good. because we just knew God was working the miracle of making Amen. things happen. That's a faith builder. When yes. we step out in faith, time after time after time. Yes. For instance, just the other day, she was telling me, oh, they're getting ready to do mm -hmm. such and such with the currents. Mm -hmm. Such yes. and such is getting ready I to happen you. with gas prices. Mm -hmm. and, and oh, what's going to happen? Yeah. How do we prepare? How do we prepare? That's right. Good. Yeah. Leave it in the Lord's hands. That's right. Mm -hmm. Leave it in the Lord's hands. He will take care of us. Mm -hmm. and but you know He's what? brought us this far. And everything we've been through has been a faith builder to this point. Let this be a faith builder as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, it, it, it's going to get worse. Yeah, you know it, that's right. And we I'm have thinking to what they're saying here, though, and, and people probably mm -hmm. listening. Go, is it wrong when we hear these things? We see them coming to pass. The Bible says it's we're going to go happen. through this mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. with money and famine, and we won't yes. have this, and we won't have that. That's right. Is it wrong to really? You, what you said, prepare, wasn't it? Like. Mm -hmm. In other words, be How aware of what's going on. But, prepare to the best of our ability. In other words, what is it to do? In other words, like I said, if God wants you to dig a hole, He'll give you a shovel. That's right. right. Isn't that right? That's he won't right. dig it for you. Right. Right. He'll give you a shovel, but you have to dig it. So that's I'm saying, right. if we can keep it balanced, that's the main thing. I have a friend sometime, he said, I had to quit watching the news for a long time mm -hmm. because I could not balance it. It absolutely almost drove me crazy. Mm -hmm. I had to go to the doctor and get some help to slow down, so I, I had to wow. turn things off. But I think a Christian can do it. I think we can be aware of the signs right. of the times. And mm -hmm. I think also that what our focus is a lot of times is on tempor our temporal needs. Yes, how sure can, it is. How we foresee what we're going to need in the future. Let's go ahead and buy it and, and get this settled right now. Good but for I, you. Now I think the main thing that the Lord wants us to realize is that let that be him. He, he clothes, clothes the, the birds of the air. Uh, and yeah. he's taking care of us yeah. all this time. We need to remember yeah. that he'll take care of our, our food and water. We'll be sure. Amen. And uh, let God, Promise. let God take care of it. Let us focus in on our spiritual walk with Him. Mm -hmm. That is the main thing that we can fall short in. We've got to make sure it's that's a strange. It's a strange answer, 
But well. when you ask yourself the question, what's in it for me? Yeah. The answer is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. That's a strange. <laughs> That's I'm about be, what's in it nothing. for you, what's <laughs> yeah. in it for the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The answer is nothing's in it for you. That's and that's right. a strange yeah. thing, almost a strange act for a human being to have that sort of attitude. But when you look at Jesus, yeah. he came to earth, he had all the power in the universe, and he used none of it for himself. Good. Amen. None I'm, of it was good. in it. He wasn't in it that's for right. himself. No, it wasn't for he him. didn't even have a pillow. And that's the example, him. that's the example he wants us to follow. Exactly. Yeah, good. I'm, I'm reminded of what I heard a, a preacher preach one time in regard to uh, when Jesus and his disciples were in the boat and in the storm. Oh. And all of his disciples were panicking. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about order amid chaos. Yes. Mm. Can we keep order in our own minds mm. amid the chaos? Mm. And while we continue to bail out the boat, come on now. But let's not panic about it. Yeah. Because Jesus is back there in, in the back. To us, it looks like he's asleep. Mm -hmm. But is he really asleep? Yeah. Mm. Is, you know, so, and what this pastor was saying was, if I was there, I would hope I would have the, the faith to keep on bailing, mm -hmm. but not that's panic. It. That's and, it. Okay, yeah. there's a miracle that's getting ready Amen. to happen here in just a if few I'm minutes. I'm there and the boat's going down and I've got a bucket, I'm going to be bailing. I'm going to be, I'm going okay? to, I'm, right. I'm saying, Lord, I'm, I'm doing my part. I'm that's not sitting right. back and say, right. Lord, dip the water out. That's right. right. I'm going to be bailing up a storm. I'm just giving all it's got until maybe you can't. So, yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with that. And still saying God's going to take yes. care, but I'm doing my, well, yeah, what I'm, I'm doing my part. But here Thank in a second, you. I'm going to be seeing a really sorry, cool yeah, miracle. Oh and, so, and really, the, the reason you know to do your part. Well, tell me. And you know that, that self must die is because we're reading the book. That's right. And see, just yeah. as Christ met the enemy, it is mm. written, that's one way that we need to prepare. And yes. you mm. gave a wonderful segue, because mm. I'm wondering if anybody's remembering that I, said, I gave you a couple verses to look up. We've kind of slipped a little distance <laughs> from there, but it still fits somewhat. I like because it. a yes. lot of times we're thinking we're going to do this. And look mm. what Romans 8, 10, mm. verse 3 says. Who has that one? You do, Marilyn? Yeah. Thank you. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness mm -hmm. and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of oh, God. Boy. So they think that yeah. they, ha they can develop their own righteousness. They can do their yeah. own things, their own right doings. Mm -hmm. And when we do our own, what is the re result always? It's failure. It's well, failure. It you That's know what? Right. People are, are so quick to give opinions. You know, yes. the opinions on Facebook, opinions on what they think that's going to happen in the future. Yes. Everything is about an opinion. But have they, have they, so many people are not thinking, how do I, I make my, how do I um, test my opinion against the Word of God? Can I, can that's I it. make sure that what I'm saying is, is from the Word of the Lord and Amen. opinions? We need to, Stop mm -hmm. giving opinions. We need to see what God's opinion is. Well, let's see what he, his Good. opinion is on this. When <laughs> okay. we read Isaiah well. 64, 6, who has that one? Isaiah 64, okay, go Man. ahead, Brother Eddie. But we are all as an unclean thing, mm -hmm. and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, well. and we all do fade as a leaf, mm -hmm. and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Wow. There you go. Amen. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Our own, our very oh, best God. that we can do is as filthy rags. So it's only by Amen. that divine grace. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the life of a Christian, mm -hmm. as we're studying, as we're reading, as we're drawing in the Holy Spirit, having that quiet time. You know, a lot of times I've even in the past, you, you mentioned like your tablet and different things a lot of times in the morning. And I'm not saying it's wrong to, to ever do this, yeah. but I started listening more than I was reading, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was listening to the word of God or listening to a sermon. And I still do that because we can gain so much information and we have it at our fingertips right now. But... I felt like the well started drying up and oh, I began to examine now. myself what has changed. Yeah. And it was the Holy Spirit that impressed me. I need that quiet time. Amen. And the reason is because during that quiet time when it's just he and I that are reading, mm -hmm. then he can speak to my mind and my heart, just like all of you. He will speak to your mind and your heart mm -hmm. and he will bless you with you that You know what, because what, what you're 
talking about a lot of times because you every, every once in a while she'll know going to be speaking on such a thing because she does opening and closing so she knows it probably better than I do but on there she'll say uh, she'll be listening to something and she'll say well you ought to listen to so and so brother he's speaking on the same subject you're going to <laughs> and I'm just as quick like that and I'll say no I don't want to hear it <laughs> now that's not because you don't trust him or you don't think he's telling the truth I do not and this may good bad I do not want to be influenced by man in any form or fashion I got Bible and spirit of prophecy Amen. Take those two, come up with what you believe, not just your opinion, what yes. you believe based on the Word of God and Spirit of Prophecy. This is it. Yes. And then somehow some people will help you if maybe you need a little extra help. But again, you can listen to it later or whatever it might be. But I, I have a fear, and maybe I shouldn't. I, no, I'm like fearful that, that man might lead me astray or because of their position or, you know, people's, you know, pretty sharp. Like one guy the other day said, and I'll say it nicely. He said, "I, I, I like your, uh, you guys, 3ABN uh, uh, family, family worship." I said, "Why?" He said, "Well, basically, he said because you're not polished." <laughs> 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 I have to tell him well, all right, tell the truth. <laughs> oh, he we said, we "I were. like it because it's real, it's down to earth, and you, you, you folks are not afraid to just." We're talking here. Yeah. We're right. talking to you at home. We may be talking mm -hmm. here. We're talking to you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we might say things like, oh, it's come off the top of our head. Mm -hmm. But he said, I just don't like it. Really, he said myself, I don't really like it all just polished. And there's nothing wrong with being polished and being good, right. slick, whatever they might want to call it, mm -hmm. you know, and really prepared. To the, but a lot of people out there, they're just common. And they just like ourselves, and, and they just want to hear what you said, just coming off the cuff sometime, how you feel about it. And it blessed his heart. He said, I love That's that. That's good. So praise God for that. So we don't have to just dwell on the fact that we're just not polished. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. And I know I need a lot of polish. Like, you know, folks at home and here, if yeah, you really I'm want sorry, to get Anna, through yeah. this study, <laughs> we need to go ahead and introduce, because we don't have much time left to introduce the last question. I truly believe and I even have more things on question number four I think we could finish you know go through the end but let's go ahead because we have go touched ahead, a little bit on this question yeah. and it is how is order power Ooh. how is order power mm. for the Christian uh, I wrote down here that order is power to resist Satan and the evil influences of this world Ooh. I always think about when I drive in the work come on I always think about, I can go anywhere I want, but I need to stop at the stoplights and the stop signs and I need to drive in the lanes because those rules are put there Come on. to keep me safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't just go driving on people's lawns and off in the driveway and <laughs> things like that. That won't work too no, well. That won't. That's right. So the order when I, driving off the road is gonna lead me into sin. It's uh -oh. gonna lead me closer to Satan, True. to the music, mm -hmm. To the, to the the programming, the media, all that stuff, that's yeah. there to take me off the road. Mm -hmm. Jesus created the order, which gives me power to resist those things and stay good. on the road. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Absolutely Amen. right. You yes. know, we infer mm -hmm. that God is order. You can look at the cosmos. You look at the things here Heaven on is, earth. Is, is full of order. Yes. And Ooh. that's what, what happened is because Lucifer at the time did not like that order. But then when That's he true. left heaven, he realized, hey, this is not all everything it's cracked up to be. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go back up there. So he goes up there and talks to Jesus mm -hmm. and finds out if he can come back. And mm -hmm. of course, Jesus had to say, you know, there's still, there is still rebellion in your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was painful for him to see, but he realized that Satan wanted, the, wanted to be a part of heaven and everything that it brought. He just didn't want to be a part of the of the um, order and the yes. and the law. And, and really that means he didn't want to be a part of God. I always compare God's order to a watch. Remember the old watches that had all the little gears and mechanisms mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. it that kept perfect time? Mm -hmm. They were like Rolexes, perfect time. Perfect. Yes. Today we want to come in and we want to clip the teeth off of this gear and off that gear. Ooh. We want to change the balance and the order. Yeah. And now we're at the state where the watch doesn't keep good time anymore. Mm. And it's created all kind of chaos. Yes. And then who do we blame for the chaos? We blame the watchmaker. Yes. Oh, absolutely. He said, wait a minute, you clipped <laughs> off these little gears here and there. Why are you blaming the watchmaker? Yes. They don't have an answer for that. Yeah, so, the answer yes. would, I thought, I, was, I thought it would be better if I did this. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times, you know, we change the things because we want it to be better. 
but we change that which God has established, That's right. things will get worse. Psalms 50 quickly, verse 23 says, He that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Mm -hmm. We keep our life in order. If you, 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 Your speech and, and, and the truth, you know, if we're speaking that truth out there, ordering our conversation, said God's going to say, I'm going to show you my salvation. Amen. We Amen. need to see that salvation. Amen. It's a real McCoy thing. And, and 1 Corinthians yeah. 14, 33 says, For God is not a God of disorder. Mm. Now, King James uses the word confusion, but of peace. And as in all thing, and in, excuse me, mm -hmm. as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Mm -hmm. So we infer there that God is the God of order, and we see Man, that throughout sure. all of Christendom. But I wanted to go back to something you said when you said this is going to sound strange. Well, you know, we have to to die to self, basically, is what you were saying. It's it's what other people need. It's what the church needs. You know, we find power. We find power in God when we crucify self. Mm. Yes. Die to self. Oh, wow. And yeah. then He comes in. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ yes. Jesus. When we allow Him to come in and to fill these vessels, that order that He brings that through the Word of God mm -hmm. brings power in our life. Amen. Mm. And there's so many wonderful, wonderful verses that yeah. hopefully we can get to some yeah. of those. So, something that uh, came to my mind while I was mm. studying through this was Matthew 6, beginning in verse 9. Jesus' disciples asked him, you know, teach us how to pray. Uh. And you look at the prayer and Jesus says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I like that. Yeah, wow. The order, the peace, yes. the yes. everything. If God designed it and created it, it ain't broke. There's no need to <laughs> fix it like the, like yeah. the watch thing. That's if right. it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's but right. that's what Satan was wanting to do. That's right. We exactly. have the hope. We have the hope that someday it's not going to be order amid chaos. Amen. It's going to be order amid glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's going to yes. be order in that Shekinah glory, the light mm -hmm. of the world that, that gives us the life that sustains us in a new world. And that's what we look forward to. And if we're going to go there, right, mm -hmm. you've often said we need to be preparing now. Yeah. That's right. mm -hmm. And that's going back to the Bible. And, and how do we prepare? Do you think about preparing? Mm -hmm. We've heard this said, and I think probably people have quoted on and on. I think it's found in like a one testimony, 700 and some odd, the, the page. And it says there, 706. And I'm going to read part, I brought part of it down. It said, the trials of this life, now you'll, you'll recognize it, are God's workmen. Remember, it's mm -hmm. His workmen to do what? To remove the impurities huh. and the infirmities. And like this, we talk about polish, well, the roughness, mm. right? The roughness from our characters and let us for this, and prepare us for the society of the pure heavenly angels in glory. Something what you've been talking about. And then I put a little PS for myself down there below. I said right here, it says, you know, as we pass through the fire, we talk about here, right? These are these trials that come our way every day. It seems like you're just blah, 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 blah. God's workman. I call it the fire. As mm -hmm. we pass through mm -hmm. the fire, notice this. We're, we're encouraged to don't keep our eyes on the fire. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. Don't focus on that. What we want to do is take our eyes off of the fire. And by faith, we fasten our heart and our minds and our life. Uh, the Bible talks about on the unseen. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's in the, what first, Second Corinthians 4, 18 says, fix your eyes not on what you see. So the, our encouragement today is by faith. Things that's all going on here, all these tests, all these trials. Don't just keep going over and oh, I tell you, the oh, devil's beat me up. Oh, the devil's blah, 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 blah. The devil can only do to you what you allow him to do. You mm -hmm. know, those words, they reflect back on us. We hear ourselves that's say right. that all day long. Yeah. And it's just like, how can they be encouraged when they yes. have been speaking these words and re-influencing themselves yeah. with so, those so, words? So when, you, when you've been, we're encouraging people, if you think you've been beat by the enemy, beat up for that day, and you, everything in the world's happened, everything you went to do, everything you've touched went haywire, you know, that kind yes. of thing right there. Mm -hmm. It says, right, the Bible says, fix your eye on the eternal. Correct. Yes. And that's what's helped me 
umpteen times as well as I know as all the other Christians and you guys too, is we had to take our eyes off of the earth and the things that were going on here and put them on the eternal, the things Amen. not seen. I remember you know, yeah. when, I was, when I was really very ill. Come on. I remember that I would put God's promises everywhere. Good. And I, when I was discouraged, wow. sometimes I didn't know what to think, what to feel, mm -hmm. but I would just claim those promises all day long. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I yes. kept claiming these promises until they became so real mm -hmm. and, and they really fortified my life. You see, that's mm -hmm. the power Come of the Christian yes. right yes. there. Exactly. The non-Christian, we were talking about it earlier before we went, before we went on the air, the non-Christian has to turn to drugs. Mm. and alcohol yes. and certain types of music and all yes. these things they need to cope because they don't have any power. Yeah. They need yeah. to get the power from something Come else and that now. thing is destructive. Yeah. We yeah. have a hope yes. and that's our power. Yeah. So we don't need those destructive things. But you know, as yeah. Christians, what you're saying, just making my mind go here, you're talking about as Christians, we're talking about the fire here. Mm -hmm. If we, even as Christians, we may not do the drugs and the alcohol, blah, 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 but if we constantly fix our mind on the fire, mm. the fire will consume you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember, this kind of fire, the things of this world will consume you if mm -hmm. that's what we focus on. Mm -hmm. yes. That's why the Bible mm -hmm. said, take your eyes off of that. See, that's it, may, right. it may not be the it, drugs and all the other stuff, but it, it's, it's, it's the difficulties, it's the tests and the trials. That's right. We've got to get past those things. Mm -hmm. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Ooh, because, glory. You know, talking to people with their health, I'm always telling people, don't focus so much on the disease. Let's focus in on healing your body. Ooh, and then the, the body will kick out the disease. Mm -hmm. So we've got to keep our eyes focused on the right things. Mm -hmm. and oh, that's certainly. good. Amen. Yeah, I've got a Bible verse for you. Malachi okay. 3, verses 2 and 3. It says, but who may abide the day of his coming? Mm. And who shall stand when he appeareth? Wow. For he is like a refiner's fire and like yes. fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and mm. purge them as gold and silver, that they may, and this is the key point. Come on. goes along with what you were just yes. finished with, Pastor. That they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. If they're focusing on the fire that's refining them, Come on. that's not focusing on an offering in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's okay. putting And the, the fire focus. will consume. And the that fire will that, consume. That's the fire that was meant to purify us seven times hotter will also destroy us if we don't yeah. turn it around. And we need that fireproof jet. Ooh, come uh, on now, somebody. <laughs> robe on, the that's robe it. of righteousness. Amen. I, I want to just jump in because you had well, said something over there and, and it, it made me think you're talking about our power. Our, our power is really not from yeah, us, right. obviously. That's right. It's, it's right. God right. in us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the first times maybe I really experienced some of this is you know, I said one of the first time, it wasn't the first time, but I remember when my oldest uh, child was just a baby, a few months old, she had 104 plus fever. And I was at, calling the doctor back and forth. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, put in the, the lukewarm baths and trying to calm her down and she cried and she cried and she cried. Mm -hmm. And it's like two o'clock in the morning and I'm sitting there by myself with this crying baby and she's so sick and I don't really know what to do with her. And I remember reading, it was actually in Spirit of Prophecy, that there's power when you sing in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I began to sing. My, my, my. 30 seconds. Mm. Fever is gone. She's asleep. Mm. Chaos, chaos had disappeared. Uh -huh. It was peace and order mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. There is power in God's Word. Amen. There is power when we sing about averted. Him. Isn't that beautiful? I want to share this. Oh, wow. There's so many good, good verses on power, but this one really touched me. Psalm 68, verse 35. O oh God, mm -hmm. thou art terrible out of thy holy places. Mm -hmm. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Mm. Blessed be God. Amen. Our strength comes from our God. Amen. Amidst That's right. the chaos. Amen. Amen. We can have order. We can have peace in our souls that passes all understanding. Yes. And we may not understand. We may not have an answer. We may not know where the road's going to lead. Mm -hmm. But we just, as you were saying, you yeah. keep looking yeah. up. Yep. Amen. Colossians 1 27, what you're just saying here. What is it? Christ within. It's the, the hope, hope of glory. glory. Amen. That's what it is. Christ yes. within is the hope of, of glory. Amen. One thing, inward liberty, I jot this down, allows us to live, to move, and to serve the Lord with purpose. Mm -hmm. With purpose. 
the freedom that He's put in us, the freedom we have from the freedom of sin and the guilt and all that and the penalty of it, mm -hmm. the blood of the Lamb. We have freedom as a Christian to move forward with a purpose. I don't know about you, but when I'm doing the job, if there's a purpose, mm -hmm. it helps to drive you. It's a purpose. You see that purpose. And the purpose for us here is to be witnesses to the world that Jesus is coming. Amen. Quickly, if somebody Amen. has something to say, we have about a minute and a half left, so we want to make sure mm -hmm. that a thought or two real quick. Yes. One of the, uh, order amid chaos is like saying, living in the world, but not of the world. Amen. Good. Absolutely. King David said, I was young and now I am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Amen. Good. Anybody else? There was a time when I was really sick as a kid. I had bronchitis. Ah. I was fearless because my mother, my mother was there and she would take care of me. I said, no matter what happens, mom is there. If we have that kind of faith, we'll be okay no matter what. Amen. 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 Faith of a, a little child, the Bible yes. talks mm -hmm. about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Something else, honey. Yeah. Well, Psalms 59, 16 says, okay. but I will sing of thy power, yea. Mm. I will sing aloud of thy mercy. Remember, mercy's not giving us what we deserve in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and mm -hmm. refuge in the day of my trouble. What Praise a promise. The Lord. What Beautiful. A promise. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, as, as a Christian, it talks about we're a free man, we're subject to no man, and we're, yet yeah, we're servant to all and subject to all. Amen. We pray this has been a blessing to oh, you yes. folks here. We Amen. talk about the chaos of the me. world. Yeah, if no one else has been blessed, we have, but we pray <laughs> it's been a blessing to you. And it's answered some of your, your questions that you may have had. You may be going through a lot of these things. And you'll say, well, how, how did they know? We don't know. The Holy Spirit knows and wants to answer your questions and wanting to help you out. Thank Amen. you for joining us here on 3 ABN Family Worship. And we've really enjoyed our time with you. And we hope you have a good time in Jesus. We'll see you a little later on.